Hey guys, Ryan here, and don't worry, yes, we are eventually going to get to Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, and Jessica Lange, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel. But this week, we're spotlighting one of American Horror Story's greatest gifts, the fabulous Lily Rabe. Let's rewind back in time and start at the beginning of Rabe's AHS career. Lily first appeared on the show way back in 2011 as the ghostly socialite Nora Montgomery. Nora, along with her husband Charles, were the original owners of the murder house. Thanks to a series of flashbacks and the Eternal Darkness tour, we learn the tragic and horrific story of the Montgomerys, who now inhabit the house as ghosts. Now, Nora wasn't the most lovely person. In fact, she was downright nasty. She grew up spoiled rich and was extremely snobby. Her husband was a celebrity doctor and built her an extravagant home, yet despite the lavish lifestyle, she always felt she deserved better. I'm working! Working, I wish. Now come upstairs for dinner, you've made us wait five whole minutes. The Montgomerys lived far beyond their means, as Nora's spending surpassed even her husband's wages. In reality, she should have paid closer attention to Charles' drug addiction. Now, Nora came up with a plan for the family. She would organize illegal abortions for Charles to perform in the basement in order to make some extra cash. And this worked for quite some time, except, of course, for that whole Bartholomew thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Montgomery's family grew as they had a son, Thaddeus. Nora wasn't entirely into the whole mother thing, though. That's an understatement, actually, as she didn't bother to feed, bathe, clothe, or even take care of her son in any manner, passing off those responsibilities to the maids. She couldn't even put up with a little bit of crying. Back to that whole underground abortion business. Unfortunately, one of the distressed patients told her boyfriend about her experience, and as revenge, he kidnapped Thaddeus. He then dismembered the child and returned the body parts in separate glass jars to the family. Now the ether-addicted Charles attempted to put his son back together, a sort of Frankenstein of various parts. Nora found out about this and understandably freaked out. The child was no longer Thaddeus, he was a demonic creature that would become known as the Infantata. Horrified and distraught, Nora killed Charles and then turned the gun on herself. As a ghost of the house, Nora was a bit obsessed with everything the subsequent owners have done to her house. Still dealing with the loss of her own child, she's also fixated on any and all children in the house. At times, this included Tate, who looked up to Nora as a maternal figure in his troubled life. When he was a young boy, she saved Tate from the Infantata. He promised her that one day he would get her a child of her own. That brings us to the horror of the Harmon family. Tate eventually poses as Ben Harmon in the Rubberman suit, rapes Vivian, and impregnates her with the child that Nora so desperately wanted. As fate had it, she would have twins, one a stillborn, and the other the damn antichrist Michael Langdon. Now, Vivian died from childbirth, joining her family as well as the other ghosts in the house. She finds Nora in the basement with her baby boy, one who would not stop crying. Again, Nora isn't a fan and realizes that Vivian is the child's actual mother. At this moment, Nora also realizes that she might not be cut out to be a mother after all, and gives up all duties to Vivian and moves on. Lily Rabe's next appearance came the following year with Asylum's sister Mary Eunice. In reality, this was more of a two-part performance, because Lily portrayed the Briarcliff nun before and after the devil possessed her. Let's go back to when Mary was a teenager. She went to a pool party with some classmates, but it ended in total embarrassment for her. This led to her pledging a vow to God, ultimately becoming a nun of Briarcliff Manor and Sister Jude's right-hand woman. Mary was an innocent, naive, timid young woman who lived in fear under Sister Jude's strict rule, and also questioned Dr. Arden's despicable intentions. That is, until the exorcism and death of one Jed Potter. Let's just say that's when the switch flipped. With the devil in control, Sister Mary Eunice became increasingly evil, sadistic, and manipulative. This included torturing and killing various inmates, taunting Sister Jude about her secret past, and propositioning Dr. Arden on various occasions. She became an agent of chaos within the asylum and ultimately ruled it with unrelenting terror. Surprisingly, everyone in the asylum is pretty slow to catch on to the fact that Mary has changed her demeanor completely and has these all-knowing powers. 
They have no idea that the devil is inside of her and attempting to infiltrate the Catholic Church. It's not until Mary gets a visit from the angel of death that we see her true nature. Something else resides in you. One like me, but fallen. Cousin. I am no cousin of yours. The devil-possessed Sister Mary Eunice continued to terrorize everyone in the asylum, including Sister Jude, Dr. Arden, Lana Winters, and the Monsignor Timothy Howard, amongst others. Howard is even raped by her while Dr. Arden watches on. But the Monsignor eventually breaks through to the real Mary Eunice, and in one final desperate attempt, pushes her over the staircase to her death. The Angel of Death returns for a final kiss to take both Mary and the devil with her. Take me. Both of you. Lucky for us, Lily would reprise this role for the 10th episode of Freak Show when we learned about Pepper's backstory and how she ended up at Briarcliff Manor. You are my special project. No filthy toilet scrubbing. I am determined to bring out the best in you. Misty Day is perhaps Lily Rabe's most popular and iconic performance on AHS. She loves animals, gardening, Stevie Nicks, and lots and lots of dancing. I mean, how can you not root for this character? Misty is a witch with the power of resurgence, aka resurrection, and she lived a pretty quiet and peaceful life in the swamps of Louisiana prior to meeting up with the coven at Miss Robichaux's Academy. But not everyone in the community thought highly of Misty and her powers. In fact, the nearby church thought that she was possessed by the devil, so she was burned at the stake and presumed dead. It's you that will end in flames. I swear it! But thankfully, she was able to resurrect herself thanks to her vast powers and the healing properties of her swamplands. Throughout the course of the season, Misty helps a whole bunch of people and animals. Some alligators against a couple poachers, she tends to the resurrected Kyle, and brings Myrtle Snow in Madison Montgomery back from the dead. Her powers of resurgence were so great that some believed, Myrtle Snow included, that she could be the next Supreme. This led Misty to join the other witches at the Academy, and she formed a strong bond with Cordelia. But Madison was extremely jealous and tried to bury her alive in a coffin. Madison sucks. Ultimately, the coven finds her and she's brought back to the Academy. She then participates in the Seven Wonders in order to find a new Supreme. It's here when she attempts dissension that Misty gets stuck in her own personal hell, a biology class frog dissection that loops endlessly. Poor Misty. A heartbroken Cordelia in Coven can only watch as her body disintegrates into thin air. No, 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 no. But don't worry, Misty wasn't dead for good because in AHS, no one ever really dies, right? In Apocalypse, Michael Langdon proved his vast powers by bringing Madison, Queenie, and Misty back to life, something that even the now supreme Cordelia failed to do. Come on. Back from perdition. Because of all the trauma that she endured, Misty took a little bit of a time out to relax and enjoy some Stevie Nicks. Eventually, Mallory resets the entire timeline in the apocalypse, thus sending Misty back to her personal hell. But by the end of the season, we find out that Papa Legba allowed Nan to bring Misty back to the coven for good. Oh, how can this be? Guess everyone hates their boss, even in hell. Lily took some time off from AHS, except for that freak show cameo, and then returned for a pair of episodes in the fifth season of Hotel. Again, she played a ghost, but this time around, she was the infamous serial killer Eileen Warnos. A handful of the worst serial killers in history joined together for a fun dinner party on Devil's Night at the request of James March. Before her death by lethal injection, Warnos was a prostitute who killed seven men in Florida in the late 80s, early 90s. Again, it was a quick cameo for Lily, who really doesn't factor into the larger plot of Hotel, but it was great to see a familiar face back on the show again. Lily took on a much bigger role the following season as Shelby Miller in Roanoke. Here she played a traumatized woman who lived with her husband Matt in the Roanoke house. Now the fun part about all of this is that they decide to share their story with some TV producers who create the show My Roanoke Nightmare based off their experiences. On the show, Audrey, played by Sarah Paulson, portrays Shelby. The show is a massive hit and makes Matt and Shelby household names. Love you, Shelby. Oh, 
Thank you. After moving into the home, the couple noticed some unusual paranormal activity. This included the usual weird noises at night, some ghostly colonial apparitions, and even teeth falling from the sky like hail. And then it went full supernatural with a actual human sacrificial ceremony. The problem was no one, even the cops, believed them that the house and lands might have been haunted. Now you would think that they would get up and leave the house for good. Well, they didn't. Things actually get worse for them as Matt gets seduced by the original Supreme Witch and Shelby gets chased around the house by the Piggy Man. They then learn about the horrific history of the house and the deaths of the handfuls of people before them. Even when they try to escape, they are attacked by their nice neighbors, the Polk family. Shockingly, however, they survive, and they're able to make an escape in a car to rest up in a nearby motel. But for some ridiculous reason, Matt and Shelby decide to return to the house to film the reality reunion show Return to Roanoke, Three Days in Hell. That's right, they barely survived the initial experience and learned about the dark history of the place, but they still insisted on taking home a reality show paycheck. Your expected reality show drama commences, including screaming, fighting, and infidelity. Again, Matt has sex with the witch, causing Shelby to violently murder him in real life. I am in love with her, Shelby. She's the reason I came back. <laughs> she then tries to escape the house with Matt's look-alike actor Dominic, but then they're chased by the spirits in the house. No longer able to live with her own actions, Shelby decides to commit suicide in an upstairs bathroom. That would not be the last of Lily Rabe for AHS fans. In American Horror Story 1984, Lily returned to a role that she's done so well over the years, a ghostly distraught mother. Back in the late 40s, Lavinia Richter lost her youngest son Bobby to a horrific boating accident at Camp Golden Star. She went mad and blamed everyone at the campground for his death including his older brother, Benjamin. Hurry! Get off me! I'm sorry! Get off me! Someone... Where's the lifeguard? Where is that little shit? Where were you? Where were you? Lavinia eventually got her revenge on all those she perceived as responsible. She massacred the entire campground of counselors and even tried to take Benjamin's life. Fortunately for Benji, he stopped her and killed her in the process. The blood that she spilt was said to hold a blood curse on the lands from that day forward, meaning anyone that was killed there would forever be linked to the campground in the afterlife. Decades later, Benjamin returned to the camp, now Camp Redwood, and Lavinia saw her son falling in love with another counselor named Margaret Booth. Still looking for vengeance from Bobby's death, Lavinia motivated Margaret to massacre everyone in the campground and frame Benjamin for it. I just... I needed to give her a little push. Amongst the ghosts on the campground, Lavinia became known as the Lady in White. She was the most feared spirit on the grounds and oversaw decades of murder and horror. Benjamin again returned to Camp Redwood and seeked a final meeting with his mother. After learning about all his mother had done, he took his own life in a final attempt to square off against Richard Ramirez and the devil himself. <laughs> So which Lily Raid performance is your favorite? The correct answer is all of them, but let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.